Welcome back to another episode of CoinSites by CoinLive, where we make blockchain simpler. For more of the latest news, updates, and trends on crypto and blockchain, head on down to www.coinlive.com or download the app today. In the realm of tech moguls, few names shine as brightly as Pavel Durov, the mastermind behind the wildly popular, yet controversial, messaging app, Telegram. With his chiseled features and piercing gaze, this young tech entrepreneur is not only a genius in the digital sphere, but has women falling head over heels for him. His rugged good looks have earned him a spot on various most handsome CEOs lists, leading many to wonder if he's a real-life Tony Stark. He was also nicknamed the Russian Mark Zuckerberg for creating Telegram, the Facebook of Russia. But Durov's appeal extends far beyond his physical appearance. As a pioneer in the world of messaging and social media, he has revolutionized the way we communicate and interact. Only under his leadership, Telegram has become a beacon of privacy and security, attracting millions of users worldwide. However, the app has also been shrouded in controversy, with critics accusing the platform of enabling the spread of misinformation, hate speech, and extremist content. Telegram has been the go-to communication tool for criminals, as the app offers secrecy and privacy features that other apps simply doesn't. Despite these challenges, Durov remains a trailblazer in the tech industry. Join me as we delve into the fascinating world of Pavel Durov, a true icon in the tech industry, and explore the complexities surrounding his brainchild, Telegram, and also Tuncoin, Durov's crypto project. Pavel Durov was born on October 10, 1984, in Leningrad, Soviet Union, to a family of intellectuals. His father, Valery Durov, was a philologist and professor at St. Petersburg State University, while his mother, Albina Durova, was a linguist and teacher. Growing up in a family that valued education and creativity, Pavel was exposed to the world of technology from a young age. His father, an avid programmer, taught him the basics of coding and computer science, sparking a passion that would ultimately birth Telegram later on. Pavel was a curious and ambitious child, always looking for ways to challenge himself. He attended the prestigious gymnasium number 239 in St. Petersburg, where he excelled in mathematics and physics. During his teenage years, similar to many his age, he became fascinated with the internet and its potential to connect people across the globe. In 2001, at the age of 17, Pavel created his first online project, a platform for sharing and discussing scientific and technical knowledge. He then later followed his father's footsteps and went on to study at St. Petersburg State University, where he earned a degree in computer science in 2006. During his university years, he was heavily influenced by the works of Apple founder Steve Jobs and CEO of Tesla and SpaceX Elon Musk, whose innovative approaches to technology and business inspired him to pursue his own entrepreneurial path. After completing his studies, Pavel worked briefly in the software industry before embarking on his own ventures, VContact, also known as VK, and later, with his brother, Nikolai Durov, they created Telegram. Nikolai Durov is his older brother, and despite his great contribution to Telegram, Nikolai remains a low profile compared to his younger brother. Pavel Durov has always kept his family away from the public eye. He has two children, though his wife or partner is remains unknown. Meanwhile, internet self-proclaimed investigators did some digging around and it was rumored that Durov might be dating Elena Shishkova, a Russian model. After they were seen together in photos that Elena Shishkova and her friends posted, despite the two were surrounded with friends, people still think there is something more between the two. Shishkova denied dating rumors in a brief interview at her modeling event, while Durov might have subtly confirmed their relationship. Durov posted a short video update on Telegram where it demonstrates main functions of the updated app for Android. In the video, he shows how he accepts calls from Shishkova and corresponds with her. Furthermore, photos of Shishkova's birthday celebration with friends and Durov were also later posted on her Instagram. In 2006, Pavel Durov, then just 22 years old, co-founded VContact, a social networking site that would become Russia's equivalent of Facebook. VK quickly gained popularity, attracting millions of users and establishing itself as a major player in the Russian tech industry. Durov's vision for VK was to create a platform that combined the best features of Facebook, MySpace, and other popular social networking sites, with a unique focus on the Russian-speaking market. However, VK's rapid growth was not without controversy. VK was accused of allowing widespread music and video piracy on its platform, leading to legal battles with copyright holders. It also faced criticism for its handling of user data, including shared personal information with third-party companies and allegedly cooperating with Russian authorities to monitor user activity. Furthermore, VK faces censorship issues and was accused of censoring user content, particularly related to political and social issues, sparking debates about freedom of speech and online censorship. However, Durov was always quick to come into VK's defense and established that he is an avid supporter of piracy and believing in freedom of sharing. The app has over 75 million monthly users in Russia and is still widely used up till today. 
In a move that was initially thought to be an April Fool's Day prank, Durov announced his resignation on his VK page, citing disagreements with investors and the company's direction. However, it soon became clear that Durov's departure was not a joke. On April 21, 2014, Pavel Durov was abruptly dismissed as CEO of VK, the company he co-founded. Durov believed his ouster was a result of his refusal to surrender user data to Russian authorities, including information on participants in the Euromaidan protest movement. He accused Vladimir Putin's allies of taking control of the company, effectively ending his reign as CEO. Following his departure from VK, Durov left Russia, stating he had no intention of returning. He stated that he was forced to leave Moscow in 2014, after a SWAT team appeared at his home. He declared that the country had become inhospitable to internet businesses, making it impossible for him to continue his work. This marked a new chapter in Durov's life, as he went on to focus on his next venture, Telegram, which would become a symbol of privacy and security in the messaging world. In September 2022, Apple removed VK from the App Store, and VK demanded for answers. Its regulator, Roskomnadzor, said Apple's decision had deprived millions of Russians of access to VK apps. Apple then explained that it follows laws in the jurisdictions where the company operates and the apps in question were being distributed by developers majority-owned or majority-controlled by one or more parties sanctioned by the UK government. Regardless of your location, the apps could not be downloaded from any Apple App Store. Roskomnadzor called the restrictions discriminatory and said Apple has violated Russian internet users' right to free information and communication. Hmm, sort of ironic, huh? Considering that Russia has limited its citizens' access to information by forcing independent media outlets to shut down access to US social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. In October 2022, Apple reinstated the apps after the company provided proof that it's not majority owned or controlled by a sanctioned entity. After leaving VK in Russia, Durov acquired citizenship in St. Kitts and Nevis through a $250,000 donation to the country's Sugar Industry Diversification Foundation and secured $300 million in cash within Swiss banks. This allows Durov to shift his focus to Telegram, which he co-founded in 2013 with his brother Nikolai Durov and set up camp in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. As of June 2024, Durov's net worth is $15.5 billion, making him the number one richest in Dubai. Today, Telegram is the most popular instant messaging app in parts of Europe, Asia, and Africa. As of 2024, Telegram has more than 900 million monthly active users, with India leading in the number of users. It was the most downloadable app worldwide in January 2021, with over 1 billion downloads globally. With the app's insane growing popularity, Durov's popularity also grew rapidly, as many became curious about this handsome genius. Telegram is well known for its unwavering pledge to protect the privacy and integrity of its users' data, which resonates with users worldwide. However, these same features have led to tensions with governments and regulators, who often prioritize surveillance and control over online activities, or shockingly yet, a spy tool. Telegram's end-to-end -end encryption and secret chats make it difficult for authorities to access user data, which raises concerns about potential terrorist or criminal activity. For instance, the Nth Room case is South Korea's most notorious online sex trafficking and blackmail ring that used Telegram to exploit and abuse victims. In 2020, South Korean authorities uncovered a massive online sex trafficking operation, known as the Nth Room, that was led by Cho Jubin, also known as God God, and involved the distribution of explicit and manipulated content, including nude photos and videos, without consent. Telegram became a primary platform for the Nth Room's activities, including the sharing of explicit content and communication with victims, which was made possible with Telegram's secret chat feature and encryption to evade detection. The Nth Room eventually had a rapid increase of both users and victims, expanding the number of rooms, meaning Telegram chat rooms, such as Doctor's Room, Slave Room, Female Child Room and Violate Your Acquaintance Room. Subsequently, God God was arrested and charged, and Telegram shut down channels related to the Nth Room and banned accounts involved in the scandal. The app also worked with South Korean authorities to provide information and assist in the investigation. Telegram's commitment to free speech and minimal content moderation has led to the spread of controversial or extremist content, which governments and regulators aim to suppress. Back in 2022, the German government was considering a ban on Telegram after it was repeatedly used as a channel for spreading anti-vaccine conspiracy theories and even death threats. Therefore, the app has played a key role in mobilizing turnout at some of the most violent protests in opposition to the German government's COVID-19 policies since the start of the pandemic. Furthermore, scammers sold fake COVID-19 passports on the Telegram Messenger, promising hassle-free travel. These passports were either fake or duplicated from other people's COVID-negative test reports and sold for around 100 euros each, often through cryptocurrency transactions similar to online black markets for illicit goods. Telegram's allowance of anonymous accounts and pseudonyms has raised concerns about accountability and the potential for illegal activities. In April 2024, Singapore's Central Narcotics Bureau CNB, arrested a total of 36 people for suspected involvement in drug activities conducted through Telegram. 
They seized drugs worth $19,000 during the raid, including cannabis, methamphetamine, also known as ice, ketamine, heroin, ecstasy, and more. As more of Singapore's illegal drug-related activities are now conducted through Telegram, Singapore authorities disguise themselves as drug dealers or potential customers by anonymously infiltrating into these Telegram group chats. In 2018, Telegram was banned in Russia after Durov refused to grant the Kremlin access to user data. The move sparked protests from hundreds of supporters, who hailed Durov as a champion of privacy and freedom. Some even held signs depicting him as a saint. The ban was eventually lifted in 2020. Fast forward to 2022, Telegram has become a crucial platform in the war in Ukraine. In a Telegram post, Durov pledged to protect the data of Ukrainian users, citing his own partial Ukrainian heritage. This move underscored Telegram's commitment to user privacy and security, even in the face of conflict and political pressure. Pavel Durov has long been a champion of decentralized technologies. In 2020, he launched the Telegram Open Network, also known as TON, a blockchain platform powered by the Gram cryptocurrency. Despite facing regulatory hurdles and legal battles, TON has made a remarkable comeback, with Durov announcing its integration into Telegram. TON was conceived in 2019, with Durov and his team at Telegram raising a staggering $1.7 billion from investors. The project aimed to create a decentralized network for fast, secure, and scalable transactions. However, SEC filed an emergency restraint order on selling Gram tokens, citing a lack of transparency. In May 2020, Durov shut down TON, but the community of developers refused to let the project die. They launched Free TON, a decentralized version of the platform built on the same code. Fast forward to 2024, and Durov announced the revival of TON with the launch of TON Wallet Crypto Wallet on Telegram. The TON blockchain has become integral to Telegram's new ad monetization strategy, with channel owners receiving 50% of the revenue from ads displayed on their channel. Additionally, the Brighty app, a European fiat and crypto neobank, has listed TonCoin on its platform, enabling everyday transactions in TON. In addition to TON, Durov also launched a new currency called STARS, which is linked to the TON blockchain. Telegram will soon support the purchase of digital goods and services with crypto, with developers receiving 70% of the revenue, and with STARS further integrating cryptocurrency into Telegram's ecosystem. As of June 11, 2024, TonCoin is trading at $6.89, with various spikes in recent days. Durov's legacy extends beyond his technological achievements. He has become a symbol of resistance against censorship and surveillance, inspiring others to stand up for their rights in the digital age. However, given the history of Telegram's aid as a tool for illegal and illicit activities, it also became a threatening weapon against many. But one thing we know for sure is that Durov will not back down without a fight. On a lighter note, Durov is finally parting ways with his Samsung Galaxy A52, a device he chose for its popularity among his app's users. However, the typically durable smartphones succumb to Dubai's extreme temperatures, showcasing the vulnerability of even the most reliable devices in harsh environments. The incident serves as a reminder that even tech CEOs, with access to the latest gadgets, are not immune to the challenges of extreme temperatures. For more of the latest news and updates on Pavel Durov or Tion Coin, head on down to www.coinlib.com. See you on the next episode of Coinsights!